This is Jeff Mochi with RCR Wireless News, and today we have Dan Pitt with us. Um, he is Executive Director of the Open Networking Foundation. Dan, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome, Jeff. Well, our first question is maybe tell us a little bit about how ONF and, by extension, SDN and NFV are helping traditional hardware engineers, hardware network engineers, start thinking like software developers. Well, first of all, the uh, hardware engineers that develop products are sort of a different breed from the ones that install and operate them in the network operators. And they're taking different tacks. Um, if you look at the, uh, uh, the hardware developers, a lot of them work with software already. Uh, I mean, all the hardware products have embedded software, but it's embedded software written really by the same vendor that makes the hardware. And so a lot of it is proprietary. Um, they have started using more and more even open source software to build their own proprietary products around. So that's a learning curve for them. Just the way they've increasingly moved to merchant silicon for the chips instead of using all custom ASICs. On the operator side, telco or internet provider enterprise, um, they are learning a couple of things. One is that you can procure the software separately from the hardware. So they get to look around and start saying, how do I judge this software product on its software merits alone? and not by being simply bundled into the, to the hardware. Uh, many are being asked by their, their high executives to develop their own software and not just, not just buy it uh, bundled into the hardware. So there are operators that are sending, AT&T is sending you know, all their engineers in for internal training on software. Uh, I mentioned that, um, John Donovan mentioned, the big emphasis on real-time distributed software skills uh, which is actually an interesting combination of networking and applications. Applications people tend to think about the application running somewhere, whereas the networking folks take an end-to-end -end view. And uh, okay. what we're seeing is kind of a, a meeting in the middle. The, uh, the uh, sort of the software realm of the network operators is kind of divided, I think, into two main pieces. One is all the infra infrastructure stuff, which has had embedded software. That's being split open by the work we're doing uh, in the Open Networking Foundation. So the control software is separate from the, uh, the forwarding playing hardware. But now that it's separate and running in their data center somewhere, it's starting to rub shoulders with software that's for a long time been in the data center, and that's their OSS and BSS software. And this software has traditionally been um, yeah, these products are monolithic, vertically integrated, and single sourced. And what we're helping them do is to think about the modules and the functions in these things and think about procuring the software modules for those functions also independently as part of the control and management planes of their network infrastructure. So as we gradually disaggregate the OSS and the, and the BSS, they will tend to see kind of an integrated viewpoint of how they build and manage their network with the choice of best of breed software, not only for all the things they've been doing for all these years, but for new types of services and new types of customer support for smaller and smaller groups of their customers than they were able to afford to do before. What are some of the uh, functions that can be moved to the management plane, uh, perhaps easier than others? Well, let's uh, talk about some of the basic ones that they're all interested in, and uh, and that's our, uh, all the things they've been building, you know, you know, appliances for running them in the data center out in the network, things like access control lists and um, and firewalls and load balancers and, and WAN optimizers. Um, a lot of these things uh, and, and and the security functions can simply be reduced to a way of influencing, switching, and routing. How do you want certain traffic to flow through the network so that it gets where it needs to go, it's subject to the correct latency constraints, and it doesn't go where it's not allowed to go, especially if it's malicious traffic. Mm -hmm. So you can now integrate policy and security into your basic network path selection function, which is now done in a logically centralized place with SDN in the control plane and not autonomously and independently in every box you stick in the network. Mm -hmm. What, um, what are, how are carriers addressing their uh, traditional network operations center, which may have been accustomed to managing these physical network elements versus the, the internal IT group that has been managing some of these virtualized elements for a decade? And, 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 and 
you know, and, and then you've perhaps got a third group who's been managing these BSS OSS uh, layers. How are those three groups coming together and what's ONF's position and maybe helping them come together? Well, we're trying to give them choice. Um, and by separating things like transmission from the control of that, um, they get to specialize in what they want to specialize in. And some carriers are just transmission specialists and some are RF and, and EPC specialists. And um, others really are all about the customer relationship and billing. And, and, that's, and that's great. Uh, what, uh, what we want them to understand is that these things are now separable so that number one, each part of the technology can accelerate at its own rate and, and they can deploy it as fast as they want to. And number two, they have more control over what it actually is and does. They're, they're not all used to that and it's, it's gonna be new skills they have to do to, to figure that out, but they will rely on third parties uh, to some degree. And for a long time, the major ones will continue to do that. Um, so it's, it's a gradual process for them but it also is liberating to a lot of them that they can decide what services they want to offer when, and they can write or procure the software for those services and not wait for yet another box to ship that has, has more storage and there's a new operating system and this feature in it. Um, and what's really interesting to see how they can become more competitive this way. In the past, if they wanted a network feature, they went to the vendor and said, can you add this feature? And I want to do some kind of a special video multicast. And the vendor would say, well, let me think about that. Um, uh, and they would go look at it and they'd say if, positively, well, I can do it, but let me run it through some standards body first. We have to coordinate with all these things. And then number two, uh, I've got to implement it in my proprietary operating system or multiple operating systems. And then I will sell it. And when I do, you know, I've invested so much, I need a big market. So I'm going to sell it not just to you, but to all of your competitors. So thank you for the idea. Uh, three years later, you can now offer it along with your competitors. So it's no longer a competitive advantage for the operator that thought of it. With the separation of software and hardware and forwarding and control, the operator who thought of it can implement it and deploy it alone. Got it. And again, coming back and just picking up on a part of my question around historically within a carrier, you had siloed organizations. You had the NOC that was looking at the network. You had the internal IT group that was looking at a lot of the BSS, OSS. Are, uh, you talked about liberation. Are you starting to see the, the walls come down and those groups start working together perhaps more than they have in the past because the IT guys have been for over a decade looking at virtualized elements and, and, and managing uh, virtual IP packets across uh, these BSS OSS applications. And here are the network transmission guys who have been in the knot for, for 15 years looking at things the same way. Now they've got to look at them differently because these are now end-to-end -end packets that are going across the network. Are you seeing those groups work together? Um, sometimes they work together and sometimes there's a lot of friction between them. Uh, the networking industry as a whole has so much to gain from the advances in distributed computing over the last 15 or 20 years that it's a no-brainer for a lot of the people in IT to take over the networking. It's not so easy the other way around. Mm -hmm. So I think we're gonna see the gradual ascent of IT in running you know, telco networks and operator networks. Um, you still need transmission, but you don't need people configuring, doing manual configuration on, on equipment so much anymore. That's all gonna be automated and orchestrated. Um, I think it was uh, uh, Verizon that's talking about that maybe they've already announced or something that their new CEO is gonna come from their CIO. It'd be, person who was their CIO, where it's take the person who's been living and breathing IT all, all of his or her career and now put them in charge of the telco and the telco network is going to become an IT operation. Already we're seeing it in their data centers, in their cloud services, and in the way they manage their own IT. They're going to be offering their customers the same sort of services they're offering their own internal departments. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be something that the CIO has a lot of experience in already. Got it. Well, thank you for the input. You're welcome.